what is the one thing that you want them to remember? And what that may mean is that you may have to figure out what's a soundbite statement that you can repeat and pepper your your speech or your presentation with so that they can remember that thing. What is a what is the one big thing that you want them to take away? Some people there are some people that may be nervous or have anxiety in mm-hmm. thinking about the conversation or the presentation. And so anxiety is something that is really energy that our body is producing. And that energy comes from hormones or chemicals inside of our bodies. And, and that anxiety or those hormones for, from, from fear are the same hormones that our body produces when we are excited. And so we've simply got to tell ourselves, we've got to tell our brains that I'm excited, not nervous. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Welcome back. So I got a question for you. Do you ever find yourself feeling nervous, struggling to find the right words, or avoiding eye contact when you're speaking with an audience or an individual? If the answer is yes, trust me, you are not alone. In fact, fear of public speaking is a common form of anxiety. However, although public speaking can be challenging, it can also be rewarding for your business. So whether you're presenting to a potential client or you're speaking at a conference, communicating with confidence can help you establish yourself as an expert in your industry. When you speak confidently, people are more likely to trust what you say. This helps you connect and build relationships with potential clients and customers. So during this episode, we're going to talk about what it means to be confident, how confident plays a role in communication, some of the common mistakes leaders make when they are communicating, and how communication affects how these leaders are perceived. And we're also going to talk about how to avoid using filler words like, um, ah, you know what I mean? All of that good stuff. So let's dive in. Robert, welcome to the Black to Business podcast. So excited to have you here. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Well, you know how I do this thing, right? I'm a speaker, so I like to enter the stage with a little bit of energy. So do me a favor, just go ahead and say, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Robert Kennedy III. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Robert Kennedy III. What's going on? Yeah! Come on! Yes! Okay, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have not had anyone ever do that. So you have set the tone because, yeah, we, we're expecting more. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. I mean, if you were seeing me, I'd, I'd have thrown up some confetti and all of that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, you got it. You gave us that big bang introduction. So. Um, I always like to kind of start with more about, you know, who you are, what is it that you do in your business and kind of how you got where you are today. That is a huge question. You want me to answer all of that at the same time? Yes, at the same time. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Make it <a> story like. <laughs> well, so several years ago, I was okay. sitting in my living room and uh, no, it's a really long story. I mean, I can give you I, I've had several businesses. I, I okay. started with a with an online music promotions portal. I had a web design company. I lost my job uh, at, a, at a university and I started a, an e-learning development company after that. And that went well for a while until it didn't. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I went back to corporate for about a year and then started a training, speaking and training company. And so that's what I currently do. I run a training company. We speak about communication, business storytelling, presentations to people specifically in the real estate industry, real estate professionals and brokers and leaders in the real estate space. I love it. You know, coupled with your introduction and along with what you do, um, I'm so excited about today's topic, which is about communicating and speaking with confidence. Um, As business leaders, there's something always we strive to do. So I'm really excited to dive in. So going ahead and diving in, I want to first talk about the power of confidence. And for Mm -hmm. you, like when you hear that, like what does it mean to be confident and kind of what it looks like? 
So back in the day when I was in high school or, you know, for probably most of us when we were younger, Mm -hmm. I when I hear the words, the word confidence, there was a picture of somebody that would show up in my mind, right? The kid Mm. that came into class and they just got all the attention. They walked in and it's like the heavens parted and everything just like they they had stars above their head, right? Right. We thought that they were just confident. And it seemed like there was a switch that you flipped on and off. There was something that some people had and Mm -hmm. other people just didn't. And Mm -hmm. so we were on this quest to find out, oh my gosh, how do I get that confidence gene? Is it something that I could pick up at a store? Can I buy it on aisle six? You know, what, what, how do I get it? Mm -hmm. And the truth is confidence is something that all of us have access to. Mm -hmm. And I like to define confidence as repetition with the expectation of success. Mm -hmm. So to define that or to, to exemplify that, I remember a couple of years ago, I was teaching my daughter to drive. Mm-hmm. And when she started to drive, the first few times she went into the car, she would sit in the car and she looked to her left and she would adjust that mirror. And then she would look to the right and she'd adjust that mirror. And then she'd look behind her or in center and adjust that rear view mirror. Then she put the car into reverse and look down at her feet to make sure that she was tapping the gas. And then she would try to touch it really gently at first to see how, how fast it would push the car. And she was mentally and physically going through all of these different processes. Mm -hmm. Several months later, my daughter, I would give her the key and I would jump in the car with her and she just did this stuff and she was just like speed off. And I'm kind of like, dude, slow down. (laughs) Right. She's not processing all this stuff anymore, but now Uh she's just more confident behind the wheel of the car. Why? Because she'd done the same thing over and over again for months. She repeated the same action. So if we're talking about confidence and you think somebody has it and somebody doesn't, some people have a more, more aptitude or maybe more talent to get to a certain space, but we all have the ability to repeat certain behaviors until we become confident at it. Mm. And, you know, I think about, I love that story that you share because it puts everything into perspective. And I think about the role of being uncomfortable in that mm. journey to confidence. Yes. Like, yeah. What would you say about that? Well, I, you know, Nike has this slogan that they've used and people have heard it for, for decades now. And mm-hmm. it's like super successful because it really encapsulates the behavior that we all strive for. And that slogan is just do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Easier said than done. <laughs> well, yeah. But uh, again, it's, it's like if, if I say I want candy. Uh-huh. The candy dust doesn't appear in front of my face. I've got to perform an action in right. order to receive it. Yes, somebody can give me a gift, but I still have to reach out to grab the gift. I still have to take the candy up from the table and unwrap it. I still have to put it in my mouth. Mm-hmm. I still have to do the work of chewing or or licking or whatever it is to mm-hmm. get the enjoyment from it. So mm-hmm. there's always an action that pre- that precedes a result. Always. Love it. Love it. And now, how do you think confidence plays a role into communication and touch on the fact that as a business leader, that's important to have that confidence when you're speaking and communicating? Yeah. So I think we all have their emotion is is plays a role in communication. Right. There, mm-hmm. there are these un or nonverbal things that we look at. If somebody comes into a room, if there's a leader of an organization and they come into a room, there are a lot of nonverbal things that they do that indicate to us whether or not we should pay attention, listen, remember what that person is going to say. If they come Mm -hmm. into the room and their shoulders are slumped or they look like they didn't take any care for how they dressed that morning. You know, they still got sleep in their eyes. The, the the corner of their mouth still has that white stuff in it. They didn't they didn't <laughs> they didn't they didn't brush their teeth properly. All of these things take we take those into our brains mentally, and we and we start to judge hard, mm-hmm. right? We, we, I don't care if you say no. I don't judge people. Yeah, you do. We all judge people. We make right. judgments, snap judgments, all the time. And so, if I come into a room and I appear a certain way. 
then you make a decision about me. If I come into a room and the way that I communicate information to you appears to be confident, Mm -hmm. you are more likely to listen or take action on that information that I share. So, uh, and when we talk about confident, it's not just about the energy. It may just be about that repetition. If I repeat what I need to say often enough, if I repeat the words, if I repeat the information, if I interact with that information often enough, Mm -hmm. typically what we call that person is an expert and we pay more attention to experts. Robbie, you know what that makes me think about also is the when you talk about appearance, uh, I totally agree as well. And it makes me also think about you have that, but you also have this instance where people see like the image of, say, a Mark Zuckerberg and his sweats mm-hmm. and those things. But still is like, OK, he he's reached a certain kind of level where it doesn't matter what he looks like. And so people have this maybe idea of. I can come in and still be a boss and, you know, handle my business and people need to still take me serious, even if I'm in sweats and, you know, T-shirt. Yeah. You know, life isn't absolute. Life Mm -hmm. isn't isn't this one thing, this one rule that is always true. Um, And confidence and influence are there. There's several factors that are involved in that. So, for example, if I talk about as I teach about communication. Mm -hmm. There's some there's communication and influence is broken down into three things. So there's the the visual. We just Mm -hmm. talked about how you look that influences people. There's the vocal, how you sound, the confidence with which you speak, the tone of your voice, whether you're super soft, whether you sound like you're you're not passionate, whether you're a monotone person, that influences. And then there's the verbal, which is the actual words or the content that you say. So if I go to numbers on this, the visual influences people about 55%. Mm. The verbal, the vocal influ- influences people about 38%. 55 and 38 is 93. So that leaves 7% for the ver- verbal. So there are three things that are at play. Mm-hmm. You know, so Mark Zuckerberg, the way that he dresses, that's that that's visual. Mm-hmm. But but that's not the only thing that people pay attention to. I can guarantee you when Mark Zuckerberg Berg first went to school, if he was just wearing a T-shirt and jeans with holes in them, most people wouldn't pay attention. True. It was when he got this software that started to gain some traction And people were like, oh, my gosh, the software is gaining traction. Who was the person behind this? They said, oh, oh, that dude, Mark. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go over there. We see money. (laughs) We we see dollar signs as a possibility for this. Right. Right. So so don't walk into a room with a T-shirt and jeans. Be like, oh, yeah, (laughs) everybody's going to give me the same attention like they gave Mark Zuckerberg. You got to have some more stuff than that. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Love that you put it that way. Got it. And so what would you say confident communication is not? Wow. You, uh, you, you asked the opposite way. A lot of people say, <laughs> what is confident communication? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming from the back end, right? I'm going to reverse this, flip it mm-hmm. on you, Robert. All right. What confident communication is not? So confident communication is not perfection. Mm. You don't have to get all of your words right you don't have to get everything pronounced perfectly. You don't have to get everything in the right sequence or right order all the time. That confident, confident communication is not that. I mess up. I make mistakes all the time. I've stumbled. I've repeated. I've ummed and I've odd all through this episode so far. <laughs> <laughs> right? And that, so confident communication is really more about... Your knowledge, your expertise, your Mm -hmm. authenticity, and how you translate that. And I'm going to use another C word that's that's critical, your connection to your audience. If you can get somebody at the heart, if you can connect with their soul, if you can get them emotionally, then you can mess up and do all sorts of crazy. They're just going to, they'll give you permission because you got their heart. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So confident communication is not perfection. Confident communication is not absolute. Confident communication is not uh, what's another word that I can look for here. Confident communication 
is not you got me mess you got my mind trying to work backwards i i i I don't work well that way no that's not true actually when i was a kid my mom used to give me these mazes and i would never Uh start from the beginning i would start from the end i would start from the back so i should i should be used to this right because you know people are going to think okay this is it this is what it should look like but this is like no these are the things you should not go out there thinking and like you said like perfection is true right i could still be confident and not have it all right Correct. That's encouraging. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so, Robert, you've worked with some amazing organizations and individuals such as the U.S. Coast Guard, Barnes Mm -hmm. & Nobles, UNCF, T-Mobile, and others. So you have seen a lot of things and a lot of successes, but also people making probably a lot of mistakes. So what are some of the common mistakes you see when it comes to leaders and speakers regarding having that confidence in the way that they communicate? whether it be with those within or outside of their organizations. One of the biggest mistakes is the pressure to try to prove how smart you are. Mm. A lot of times Mm. when people are in leadership positions, Mm -hmm. they feel pressure. They're like, my gosh, this, this, I got this title. I have this title and I need to prove that I'm worth it. I need to prove that I didn't pay somebody off. I need to prove that I earned my stripes and and that I'm here. And so they try to add, pack a lot of statistics, like pack a lot of data, try to pack a lot of important information or what seems to be important information in their communication. And as I just said, what's crucial is connection. What are your people experiencing? What emotions are they feeling? What are the challenges that they're walking through? Do you understand those? Have you experienced them? Do you know what it's like to experience those things? If you can get people to say, oh, my goodness, I know exactly how that feels. Or, yeah, that thing happened to me the other day. Mm -hmm. Then you've got them and you've got their attention. And now you can communicate some of the data, some of the information. So starting out with just the 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 big numbers and the statistics and the charts and all of that uh, and trying to prove that you're smart and know the, know those things is you know it's a part of communication it's necessary but that's not where you start you really want to start with connecting I love that and of course this is the Black to Business podcast we're speaking to Black entrepreneurs and as Black people we oftentimes feel like we have to be twice as good, work twice as hard. So that makes me think about a lot of times when we might walk into rooms and we feel that we have to overcompensate or just seem smart. Just what advice would you have to Black entrepreneurs when it comes to what you said is seeming as though they have to appear super smart and how this all affects their confidence? Yeah, it, it it's all about, it's influence. Influence is the big mm-hmm. word here, right? You've got to understand who's in the room And what are the things that they care about? If I go into a a, a conference, if Bill Gates is there Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of us and I'm going to use black entrepreneurs and and we've got to connect with Bill Gates in Mm -hmm. order to gain a grant or gain some money from him. I've got to figure out, Okay, do I just go in and just thrust a lot of information at Bill Gates or do I get on the, on the web and find out what is Bill Gates passionate about? What does he care about? Bill Gates has the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and they give money for certain things and we I've got if I know what Bill's latest effort is or his latest pet project is, what's concerning him right now, what he's giving to right now, then I can speak to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get his attention because I'm speaking to something that he's already thinking about. I'm speaking to something that he's already passionate about or concerned about. And when, when I do that, that's like a trigger. That's like an anchor. That's like this, this connector that, that reels him in, that reels me in that we're, we're on the same wavelength. We, we, we think about the same things. We're speaking the same language at that point. So yeah, as, as black entrepreneurs, you may think it's about trying to prove how smart you are or how much, you know, what you need to know is what your audience or the people who you are looking to influence, what they care about. Do that work. Well said. 
And speaking of how people go in, of course, they think, you know, they have to sound super smart. I want to touch on how this affects how they are perceived by others, whether it be their peers or whether it be those employees that they work with. Well, I I mean, you're asking me that question. I just want to I want to throw that back on you and our audience. When you see somebody Mm -hmm. who who you think or who appears to you like they're just trying to smart trying to be super smart. I mean, we have names for them all the time, right? We, we got, names, you know, kiss up, uh, brown noser. We got all sorts of names for these people. People, I know, you know, people sometimes they're like unaware. And I have a friend, she always says, this is so funny. She's like, I had a manager and it always when he's talking in my head, I'm like, you talk long, you talk wrong. And I always thought about that. And I'm like, let me make sure I'm not talking long or wrong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's not so much that it's long. Mm-hmm. It's really about not connecting with your audience. There are some people who can talk forever and we just love to listen to them. Yeah. They can talk. They can talk for two hours and we listen to them. You know, I think about and I'm going to use a, a religious example. I think about mm-hmm. like a T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes okay. speaks at his church and he he can speak for an hour. He can speak for 90 minutes. He can speak for two hours and people will sit and listen. Yes. Yeah. Because he's got a, a way to connect with his audience. That's true. There are some people that can speak for 10 minutes and you're like, Oh my gosh, why am I even here? I, let me, where, where's the exit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. And so it's about the connection. And so there's some people that are super talented at connecting with people. Yes. So let's talk about building up that confidence and communicating confidently. So as a business leader, how does one who's listening come off assertive and and confident instead of aggressive and confident? Because like we talked about perception, you know, presenting presenting themselves in a certain way so that they are not perceived as the aggressor when they're speaking with someone else or communicating something. Yeah. So there's a difference between aggressive and assertive. Mm -hmm. aggressive requires me to go up and you to go down. Mm -hmm. Aggressive requires some hurt or some manipulation or the perception that I'm stronger than you. Assertive is about the result. Okay, listen, we all need to get here. So let's do this. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get to a hundred thousand dollars in fundraising this year. Let's uh, let's implement these three strategies. If they don't work, then let's try to figure out what's next. But we don't have time, so we've got we've got to we've got to start working. That's assertive communication. Aggressive communication is, hey, listen, we got to get to this. If y'all if if y'all don't work hard, we're not going to get there and if it doesn't happen, then all y'all are going to be fired. We got so so there's a difference between aggressive and and assertive. Assertive isn't pointed at a person. Assertive mm-hmm. really focuses on a process or a result. Got it. So Robert, we walked through some good, good steps. And one of the things we kind of spoke about earlier you touched on is filler words. So I want to talk about that because I know people uh, struggle with, they're like, okay, I have what I need to start to build my confidence when I'm communicating. So how do I avoid using or minimize using filler words when I'm communicating? Any tips? Well, there there are quite a few things. Number one, filler words, at least some of them, aren't the death of your talk. Mm Mm-hmm. Barack Obama was a phenomenal communicator, and a lot of people thought of him as one of the best presidential communicators that we've seen in a long time. If you listen to Barack speak, there are times where he speaks and he says, well, um, uh," and and he he has filler words that he uses all the time. The frequency of your filler words is what really gets people. So I've listened to podcasts and there are people, they'll go on and they'll use words like, and since this is a black to business, I'll use some typically black words, right? Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, uh, no, no, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, and I've heard people saying every few sentences, they'll say, yeah, and I was doing this, this, that, and a third, and this, that, and a third. Mm-hmm. And the, the entire thing is this, that, and a third. 
what are the things that you repeat? So we typically think about them as just um, ah, and yeah. like, and so, and you know. What are the things that you repeat? One of the things, and, and all of us have them sometimes, yeah. I have this filler word that I use and I cringe when I listen to some of my talks sometimes and I hear it. And my filler word that I'm working on still is, right? Oh my God. I was just about to ask you about that. I was like, <laughs> right? I'm, I don't know where this came from. Where did this right come from? <laughs> yeah, that That's the word that I use. I listen to it. And I go back and I say, okay, cool. That's the thing that I've got to work on. So as I practice, I've got to listen to that. That is so funny you said that because I was thinking about asking you about, I'm like, where is this right coming from? I've I've heard it mostly within the last two years or so. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm like, where did this right come from? And you were pausing, but you didn't say right. And I was like, I can ask him. Yeah. Yeah. And so there, there are times where I still use it. And I, 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 as I practice, as I look back, I take mm-hmm. a look at what are the things that I need to do to get better, to mm-hmm. be more precise, to be more influential in my speech. And so I use tools to help with that. There's a, an app called Orai, O-R-A-I, that gives some of that feedback. Orai O-R-A-I-A-P-P dot com is the website for that. There's another phenomenal one called Udly, Y-O-O-D-L-I. And I don't remember if it's Udly dot com or Udly dot A-I, one of the two. But Udly is a phenomenal tool and you can use it for free as well. That gives you, you can use it on your Zoom calls or any online thing Mm -hmm. that you're taking a part in. And it gives you feedback on your filler words, where you sounded confident, where you sounded like you weren't certain? What are some of the words that you tend to use that are not clear? Where are you speaking with passive language versus active language? Those are some of the things that tools like that can help you identify and then you can work on it. It's hard to work on something if you haven't identified it. So filler words, one of the other things that the last thing that I'll say about that is filler words are typically there because we are scared of silence. Mm. our minds and our mouths work at two different speeds. And so when one is catching up with the other, we're, there's a little bit of silence and our mouths fill that with, uh, so that there's no silence there. So wow. if you talk and you are thinking, make yourself used to stopping just to be silent, just to pause for a moment. And then pick up your next phrase, because a lot of times we're, we don't want it to be silent. So we fill it with something because we think that silence is awkward for the audience. And it sounds longer to us than the audience is perceiving it to be. Mm-hmm. That is such good advice. I think about me. I use like a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things I'm working on. So that is such a great tip. And yeah. one of the yeah, one of the things you said that made me think about. Uh, it made me think about inflection in your voice mm-hmm. when you're speaking, because that can also engage people as well. Uh, any tips on, you know, that? Yeah, absolutely. There there are things, as we talked about, v- visual, vocal, mm-hmm. and verbal before. Vocal, that includes inflection. It includes the speed or the pace at which you speak. If you are somebody who speaks in a monotone voice all the time like Mm -hmm. that and you don't go up or down and you keep in that same range the entire time, you sound kind of robotic. As a matter of fact, let me see. Where's my robot voice? You may sound like (laughs) a robot voice. Okay. (laughs) I need that. What do you have over there? I don't know. I have a robot voice. There it is. Okay. Yeah. So your audience is probably like, what the heck is going on? They love it. <laughs> like, yes. But you, you, you've got to be, you pay attention to those things because mm-hmm. robotic or monotone voices put people to sleep. Right. They put people to sleep. And there are a lot of different things that inflections do. For example, over the past maybe 10, 15 years, you've probably heard of the phenomenon of up talk hmm. where people at the end of every sentence, they start talking like this. And at the end of every sentence, their voices go up and it indicates to the audience that they're trying to ask questions. And so (laughs) being Ah. aware aware of your inflections is important. Being aware aware of the range Uh with which you speak. Sometimes if you want to 
help people get a point or it comes across as important, you may decide that you're going to go a little bit higher with your voice and speak a little bit more quickly because you want to insert some energy into that speech. But if you want people to reflect, then you might take your voice down a little bit lower. You might even take it softer and you'll start to speak a little bit slower because you want to give people a chance to really reflect, think, and resonate with a part of your talk. That is so good, Robert. This is so good. Oh, I, I love I love us. I love the Black to Business podcast. I love Black people in business. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Okay. So we got the filler words, how we can work on that. And then also people are like, okay, how do I deal with that fear of judgment? And how are people going to perceive me as far as, you know, I'm messing up. But then also, if you go into a workspace and you came in and you're like, I changed my mind on how I'm going to speak or how confident I'm going to show up. People show up and they're like, who is this new person? Mm -hmm. I changed my mind. What would you say? You can't, you have no control over what other people think. Mm -hmm. You can only control who you are. You can only change your behavior you can see how they respond and you can make some adaptations or you can adjust based on the result that you want. Mm -hmm. But ultimately you can't force or you don't have control over what they think. So if you're scared about judgment, if you're scared of what they're going to think, mm -hmm. then you've already lost the battle. Mm -hmm. And not that we're fighting a battle to win in every circumstance. You've lost the battle with yourself. Right? Judgment is judgment is what people do. Period. It's judgment is how people survive. A lot of times we think about judging or judgment as a bad word, and it can be used inappropriately. But judgment is we can call it another word. We can call it discernment. Right, and that's how we survive. And people make their decisions based on what they discern or what they, they perceive. And so you have to think about, okay, what do I want them to perceive? What is the result that I'm hoping for from this conversation or this presentation or this interaction? And if there's a specific result that I can identify, then I say, okay, how do I adjust what I do or how do I adjust my behavior to better or my, more likely achieve that result? Mm -hmm. Got it. And so people who are in the business space are always likely prepping for a big speech or a presentation. Of course, we know not to prepare or just study the night before. What are some tips that you could give to someone if they're presenting for the first time or just prepping to present in front of a larger audience? Biggest thing, know your audience. What mm -hmm. is there? What is it that your audience needs? What's the if you if you're speaking for 15 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour, mm -hmm. your audience is likely to only remember about 10 percent of what you said. So what is the one thing that you want them to take away? What is the one thing that you want them to remember? And what that may mean is that you may have to figure out what's a soundbite statement that you can repeat and pepper your your speech or your presentation with so that they can remember that thing. What is a th what is the one big thing that you want them to take away? Some people there are some people that may be nervous or have anxiety in mm -hmm. thinking about the conversation or the presentation. And so anxiety is something that is really energy that our body is producing. And that energy comes from hormones or chemicals inside of our bodies and and that anxiety or those hormones for, from from fear are the same hormones that our body produces when we are excited. And so we've simply got to tell ourselves, we've got to tell our brains that I'm excited, not nervous. So one of the things that I do, if I feel, and you know, I've been speaking for a long time, but there are, I still feel the same feelings. I've just reached the place where I'm like, okay, yep, that's preparation for speech. And what do I do with that? What I do with it, I turn that energy into something that I can use or leverage. And so before I speak, I may go backstage and I may shadow box with myself to get my energy up mm -hmm. and just tell myself that I'm in a certain space. I may Tony Robbins, who is a, f a fantastic speaker, mm -hmm. 
can speak for hours. I mean, there are people that spend 11 hours in a row at a Tony Robbins event. He's wow. speaking the entire time. Before Tony Robbins comes out on the stage, stage to speak, there's a trampoline backstage that he jumps up and down on to change his physiology, to change his energy, to direct his energy so that he's not focused on any nerves. He's not focused on any anxieties. He's He's been intentional. He's taken charge of the energy and the focus so that he can leverage it and use it for what he needs. You got to get a trampoline or a jump rope. I'm going to take my jump rope. Something. It's something. something. It, it, you know, it can be music. I mean, uh-huh. I use music sometimes. Back in the day, I don't do it as much anymore, but with this song, but uh, one of my songs, one of my jams that got my energy pumping was, was lose yourself Eminem. Right. Ooh, like you only good. got one shot. And I'm in, I'm in the car. Like what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Knees weak. Palms are sweaty. I'm doing, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm in the car. I'm going, you only got one shot. Don't miss your chance to blow. You know, I'm doing all it Cause opportunity comes once in the life. Yes. I'm doing all of that in the car and I'm going, I've been intentional. Mm-hmm. about my energy such great advice robert this has been amazing and we want to know how can people or they're listening they're like okay this has been amazing i want to work with him so if you could <laughs> just share your how you are helping people communicate confidently your offers and your process of working with you love it so every if you want to get in touch with me you can go to get in touch with rk3.com And that'll give you my landing page where you can see courses. You can see links to my websites. You can see links to my socials, all of that. And you can reach out to me from there. So (laughs) go ahead and get in touch with rk3.com and you can you can reach me there. And what are some of the when you work with clients, what are some of the transformation stories that have really like just stood out to you? Oh, my gosh. Uh, There there are quite a few of those. I Uh, imagine Man. There was one I was working once. Actually, so here's one. A I saw this lady about three months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, she contacted me maybe about six years ago because she said, hey, Robert, listen, I've got an interview that I'm going into uh, next week. I've got to do a, pre, a part of my interviews, not, not just me sitting there mm-hmm. and um, answering questions. I've got to do a sales presentation before this company. And I'm totally freaked out. I don't know what I need to do. So we did three sessions together. And what we did was we, I I heard her presentation or what she was going to do. And number one, she came across nervous. Number two, she was just chucking information at him. Mm -hmm. And some of the same stuff that we talked about today, we, we showed how to connect. We set up her speech. We set up her presentation so that she could set it up like a story and connect with her audience. And we practiced her delivery on that. And we did that for several sessions. And she called me the Monday afternoon, super excited. She was like, oh my gosh, Robert, they offered me the job immediately. They were like, my presentation was phenomenal. So about three months ago, I saw her and she came to me, she came over to me and she was smiling. She was like, listen, I'm still working at this company and I still use the principles that you gave to me that we talked about several years ago. And you know, they're, they're, they're always asking me to deliver presentations and it's really because of our work together. So. Mm, I love that. And about you, like what has made you proud to show up confidently in your business? Like why do you do what you do and what keeps you going and staying afloat in your business? (laughs) There, there are a lot of answers to that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. And my dad, there was always speaking and showing up confidently like a leader was was a common thread in my house. Mm-hmm. If in my house, you weren't you weren't going to be the person who sat in the back and did nothing. That didn't mean you have to be loud, but you were going to be involved. You weren't going to be the one that was following everybody. You were going to be a leader in some way. You don't have to be a loud leader, but but you got to lead. So that that's how I grew up. And what what I do now is really to help people understand how they can lead and how communication helps them show up in a space of, of leadership. And so I see greatness in a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. when they don't see it in themselves. And I see it in their stories and and how they show up. And so I believe that my job is to help everybody's words 
get heard. I believe everybody's words deserve to be heard. And so my job is to help them to, to equip them to do that more effectively. Amazing. And what advice would you give to someone in their first year of business? <laughs> get a mentor. <laughs> find mm-hmm, find somebody who knows the way and can show the way. Find somebody who's been in it and uh, what are the things that you can do to shortcut or hack your process instead of trying to do it all on your own. Get somebody. We, no man is an island. We don't have to do this by ourselves. Get a mentor. Mm-hmm. And finally, what does it mean to you to be Black in business? <laughs> it means that I have some things that other people don't wake up with in the morning that I may have to do differently, but that does not block me from success. It just means I've got to be aware of my journey. I've got to be aware of the path that I've got to take and equip myself accordingly. Love that. Robert, this has been so amazing and so fun. Like it has been such a good time to learn with you, to learn from you. So I really, really appreciate you for doing the work that you're doing and also pouring into my audience and just being on the Black to Business podcast. So thank you so much. Thank you, Monique. It's been a fantastic pleasure being here. This conversation was not only insightful, but it was so fun. Robert really stepped it up with all the bells and the whistles and the effects. And I just love it when we can have fun and learn at the same time. So shout out to Robert for bringing that energy. Y'all, this was also one of those episodes where I was literally learning and catching myself in the middle of the conversation because I'm definitely someone who doesn't like silence when speaking or in a conversation. And it was so funny because I think I picked up this habit from my late grandmother We used to be on the phone and during the middle of our conversation, if there was like a long pause or we finished what we were talking about, she'd say, all right, bye, you ain't talking about nothing. And we used to joke about it or we would be like, who's going to say it first? So either we find something else to talk about or we just hang up. But now it's like a running joke in the family when there's like an awkward silence during the phone conversation. And this conversation really made me think of that. So I'm sure that's where I picked up not liking silence on the phone and probably not liking silence during the conversation. So I have to catch myself during these conversations and even realizing it during this interview. So always learning and in the midst of sometimes when I'm speaking to guests, I have to catch myself and I'm learning just like you all. So that was a great moment for me. And I'm like, "Mm, I think that's where I got that from. So something I'm going to be working on and hopefully you found something that you're going to be working on as well. In addition to realizing that, I also like how Robert recommended on changing and directing your energy before you speak, especially when dealing with nervousness and anxiety. So that's a great takeaway. Other things that he mentioned, you can check out those resources he mentioned and also how to get in touch or connect with Robert by visiting blacktobusiness.com forward slash 132. Thank you so much for listening and I will chat with you next week. Same time, same place.